we're almost facing this kind of new and perfect storm right now where we've got access to um, sensitive information is seemingly you know easier to to get with with um, uh, data breaches etc you know most it's pretty w widely accepted that most people's information is available on the internet yeah. right now right so there's yeah. very little we can hide second uh, is the social engineering side of things has become so much more powerful because even in our business, you mentioned identity verification, we've seen cases, plenty of cases where something as innocent as a, um, a WhatsApp conversation with somebody who you think you're romantically involved with, you know, a typical romance scam, but just by sending them a selfie to say, hey, look at me today, you know, here's, here's my selfie, they are mm -hmm. using that now to create a digital identity. Um, so social engineering and then the ability to turn that into uh, something very, very realistic. I think you couple those two things with um, the kind of automation side of things. And this is something that I've been thinking about a lot recently, is that if you imagine if I can automate my attack so I can take, you know, a database of a thousand credentials, generate a thousand fake um, fake identity documents using AI and a thousand corresponding um, selfies, movements, whatever I need to do, I am immediately able to uh, attack on a scale that was not possible before. And it kind of goes back to what you said at the very beginning. Before you had to be face to face, it was like a very linear thing. You were one to one, and then mm -hmm. you had to try to complete that con and move on to the next one. If I can do that a thousand at a time, sitting behind my desk it's a very it's it's a worrying thought right so mm. i guess my question is <laughs> what can we do about this right we've talked collaboration and i definitely think that's that's critical but what do you think we can do to make a real difference yeah so i think that this is the other side of the two things that i've seen at cyphouse over the last nearly decade is this increase in identity fraud. So we talked about the scam issues, so the evolution of scams, but this significant increase in identity fraud each year, year on year, identity fraud has been um, in, increasing. In fact, last year, uh, David, you know, but we uh, on, the, on the National Fraud Database, there are 409,000 cases filed last year of fraud, wow. 260,000 of which were identity fraud. So um, whilst we've been talking around scams a lot, and perhaps rightly so, because there has been huge losses once faster payments were brought in, I de you know, they have been using identities to obtain particularly things like online accounts, mobile mm -hmm. phones, uh, as well as opening bank accounts. And all part of this is a picture of how do you get information to make what looks like a credible identity. Absolutely. Um, so I absolutely agree with you that identity fraud is a significant problem now and we could see it actually escalating when we so how do we go about that so one, one thing we're working at the moment we've just we're just developing a beta testing is around what we call identity protect so trying to put and what that's will will do is putting the consumer back into the 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 genuine identity if you like back into the chain so you can get the information around impersonating someone so this is this is going to stop say stop is going to help to stop the impersonation of a genuine individual so i think there are two issues here to be dealt with the synthetic identity and the yeah. genuine identity so even though a lot of synthetic identities have lots of genuine information genuine part. Of course. yeah yes but if we look at um i want to impersonate david divot and i'm going to get a credit card or a loan in your name and i'm going to get the benefit at the moment, I could get all that information, make those applications online, go through all the processes um, and have information to 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 impersonate you. So the, the, the app will be such that you'll then get a message. We'd know you'd register as the genuine David Divot. And if someone applied for a Barclay card in your name, it would ask you, are you applying for a, a Barclay card, David? And mm -hmm. you'd be put back in a position of power to say that's me or not me. And so we're testing that as an identity protect. So we have something called protective registration at the moment, and we've had that for mm -hmm. a long time, where there's a marker on your name if you've um, either had your identity compromised, maybe you responded to a phishing email, and it's a protective. And it brings it back. What that does is bring in a lot of friction into the journey because we have to reach out to you. This will kind of reduce the friction that also give you some power so that instead of once your identity has been stolen, used, 
you then have to pick up the pieces and then six weeks later say to Barclay Card, I don't owe you £10,000 and yeah. all the other cards and online accounts and suddenly your credit rating is through the floor and you're having to persuade someone you're not a fraudster. This will put you back in, it you know, puts the, the, the citizen back in the in the driving seat. So that's what we're doing around creating what we call Identity Perfect. And it was and it was basically thinking about, as you mentioned earlier, all our data is basically has been compromised. Our data is being traded all the time. So many breaches, so many phishing emails. People don't realize half the time when they've clicked on the link and all it asks for is to fill in a form that this is trying to, uh, these, are, these are criminals trying to get your information to build a picture. So that's one input. I mean, on synthetic identities, David, I'm really kind of interested in, in companies like yourselves and how you can help industry and, uh, and even services that we've created to be more secure because we would want to, to onboard the genuine David Divot for our identity prevent. So there's th that, that is where that's not what we do in terms of the technology to be able to verify. But what we do is once we have the information, how can we utilize it to protect organizations? Because at the end of the day, David, mostly if your identity is stolen, you will be able to prove eventually it wasn't you. But that money's been lost. You know, the, the, the mobile phone company, the bank, they've lost that money. And the criminal sits, has got that money. And that's, we always have to think that the purpose of all this is that the criminal wants to earn easy money and do with it what they wish. Yeah, and I think, you know, everything, that solution sounds really interesting. And I like the kind of proactive nature of it. Um, and I think what you've really been talking about, again, we've come back to collaboration. Right. So like you say, you you are holding one piece of the puzzle with data that can be used to enrich um, our decisions, for instance, or to to prevent proactively help um, consumers themselves protect themselves. We are doing a component of the of the puzzle that um, verifies and validates when somebody wants access to to these services. Uh, and, and I've seen there are ecosystems starting to, I think, emerge where the different players will be able to play their part, the part that they're the strongest um, at, and then all come together to provide the best kind of holistic solution to, to the consumers at the end of the day. Uh, and of course, the businesses that, that house them. So I, I really like that almost all of our discussions have kind of come back to this um, collaborative nature because I think anybody who's been in this in this game for you know for any time at all realizes so quickly how as soon as you can break down the silos that exist between all of the different parties you get immediate benefits because you're not blind to to the tactics that fraudsters employ which is attack one until they they catch on move to the next one do the same thing right you just mentioned it they want access to, you know, it's the path of least resistance. That's that's mm -hmm. what they always follow, which means as soon as they get a bit of resistance, one, they'll go to your competitor or they'll go to another industry and do the same thing and even use the same identities, use the same information yep. that they've taken before, right? That's a very easy and powerful way for them to exploit, buy once and use multiple times. If we're not collaborating as an industry across these different um, types of, of um, you know, fraud prevention specialists, that becomes easy for 